When looking at snatums, an important first question is, why are they designed this way? I mean, they're all spheres with flat faces, but a different number of flat faces. Hydrogen has one. Oxygen here has two flat faces. Nitrogen has three. And carbon has four. Now, those flat faces are where the atoms can bind with other atoms. So each element can form a different number of bonds. Why is that? Well, it's because atoms consist of smaller particles. Inside, in the very middle, would be the nucleus, consisting of protons and neutrons, protons being positively charged. And then around the nucleus are electrons. And the electrons are negatively charged, and that's why they're attracted and bound to the nucleus. Now, if we look at the simplest atom, the simplest element, hydrogen, it just has a single proton in its nucleus and one electron which exists around the proton. And of course, due to their opposite charges, that's why they attract, that's why they stick together. But here's the thing, electrons exist in shells around the nucleus. So you can kind of think of there's a lowest shell and then a next shell out, next shell out, etc. higher and higher energy shells and each shell can hold a particular number of electrons. So the lowest shell can hold two electrons. But in hydrogen, there is only one electron in that shell. And so it's possible for an electron from another atom, say another hydrogen, to come in and fill that empty spot. So by sharing their electrons, these two hydrogens now have filled their outer shells. Each one has two electrons in the outermost shell. And that's why we have a bound molecule. This would be H2. That's hydrogen, hydrogen gas. Anywhere you find hydrogen, you'd find it bound like this because a little, just having a hydrogen atom like this would not be stable. It would find another one and they would bond up like that. Now, if we look at carbon, carbon has six positive protons in its nucleus, and therefore to be a neutral atom, it will have six negative electrons around it. Now, two of those electrons are in the ground shell, which is full, and then four electrons are in the outer shell. But for virtually all of the atoms in this kit, other than hydrogen, the outer shell can hold eight. So having four electrons in the outer shell means there are four places where other electrons can come in and be shared with carbon in order to fill its outer electron shell. That's why carbon has four flat faces. Carbon can form four bonds with other atoms. You look at oxygen. Oxygen contains eight positive protons and so eight negative electrons uh, around the nucleus. And again, two electrons are in the ground shell, leaving six in the outermost shell, which can hold eight. So there are two spots where other electrons can come in and we can bond additional things to oxygen. An obvious thing to do is to bond a couple of hydrogens to your oxygen, and then you have water. H2, there's two hydrogens and an O, it's water. Nitrogen has uh, seven positive protons in its nucleus, so seven negative electrons around it. Again, two in the lowest shell, leaving five in the outer shell. The out that outer shell can hold eight, and so we can bond three uh, additional atoms to it. In this case, just bonding hydrogens gives us NH3, and that is ammonia. So that is why all of these different pieces have a different number of flat faces. A different number of places where they can bond simply because of the number of electrons they have in their outer shell and the number of electrons that can exist there. The difference between the two is the number of flat face bonding sites.